There we go. This is the t-shirt we're going to use for today's memory bear. It has just a small logo, it's nothing fancy. And hopefully this is a good angle for you to watch how I'm going to do this. My iron is over here getting hot. And you'll have to ignore the noises because I am now in the basement of this house where um, it's a furnished or, you know, finished basement. So I moved my sewing area to the basement because the dining room was just too small. So this is a clean t-shirt. It was washed and there is no softener or softener sheets used. I prefer that there isn't any because it just makes ironing on this um, interfacing it just, or stabilizer, it just works better. So all I'm doing is I'm going to cut up the seam of this shirt. all the way up underneath the armpit area and into the sleeve. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're just tuning in, I'm actually recording this live on Facebook and recording it across from my phone, see back there, <laughs> on my laptop for my YouTube channel. If you have questions, I can answer them after I'm done with the video because um, I don't want to waste you know your time and I will try to talk through the video telling you exactly what it is that I'm doing so now I've cut the t-shirt basically in half following the seam and I do this for just about every shirt that I get for a memory bear or any type of stuffed animal uh, and there's other animals besides a bear people do request so if you look at the sleeve you'll see this curve right here let me show you on this side I cut the sleeve off because I use that for other parts of the bear, like the paw pads and the um, ears mostly. So I'm just going to cut along the seam. And I save these if the customer doesn't want their scraps back, I save the scraps for other projects that I do. And I do discuss that in one of my classes that I teach online. All right, so I have the sleeves cut off and now you'll see the seam across the shoulders right here. I'm gonna cut across that as well. And because this is just a ribbed t-shirt, I just cut across the entire neckline. Um, I don't need the neckline for anything particular. I'm gonna set this aside and get my chair. And I'm doing all the cutting right now on my ironing board because my cutting table is full of my class information right now. So the back side of this t-shirt, I'm just gonna run an iron over it to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Uh, no steam. And you'll have to look at the fabric or clothing that you're using and see what it says as far as what type of iron, the heat to use for your iron. Um, you're not looking for perfection, but if you pre-iron this right before you put your stabilizer on, it just helps the stabilizer adhere a little bit better. This is not a very stretchy t-shirt, so I'm just using the regular um, Pellon stabilizer that I have. Now, if it was super stretchy or like a stretchy knit, I would use the specialty stretch interfacing. Um, I pre-cut a yard of this already just to make it easier because I didn't want to bring the entire bolt over. And remember, you're going to iron the stabilizer. There's a smooth side. I don't know if you can see that smooth. And this is bumpy, kind of like, I don't know, like goosebumps or anyways, I'm not sure if you can see the texture on there. The bumpy side of the stabilizer is the glue. And that's the part that you want to have face down 
on the wrong side of the fabric. You know, the, the ugly side of the fabric, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put the stabilizer on and I'm gonna hit it with this iron. And if you want, you can put a pressing cloth over this that way you don't get glue onto your iron, but um, I'm not really worried about that because I'm working with such a big piece of fabric So I'm just going to press this and make the glue adhere to the t-shirt. When you see this video replay on YouTube, it's most likely going to be in fast forward with a voice over perhaps. So if you're catching it live, lucky you. <laughs> Again, I don't use steam for this. You'll want to look at the particular interfacing that you're using to see if you, know, if you need steam or not. This memory bear is actually going to be a gift um, for someone. And I'm not going to say that person's name because they will probably be watching this. I like to make sure the stabilizer is on there real nice and um, adhered to the fabric. All right, so that is one part of the t-shirt. I'm just gonna make sure that I got this on here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut across, and I've been making memory bears for quite a while now, so you might not have as much experience as I do, but take your time um, when you're working with this until you're comfortable without having to like measure things. Um, let's see here, this is stuck to this one. I'm gonna remove the extra off of here because I'm probably not gonna be using that piece um, of fabric. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna make sure this is still adhered to where I cut it already. And not every memory bear needs to have interfacing just so you know uh, you'll know this with the fabric that you use if you're using denim or corduroy there's not much stretch to that fabric so you're most likely don't need to stabilize it again that's up to you and the customer all right so I'm just gonna trim off the extra so it's not in my way later and this would be easier if I had a cutting table available. <laughs> but I don't have that right now because I have it full of all my books and um, class notes for the classes that I've been teaching. And also the classes I, I just finished. I'm a certified end of life doula now. So I just finished that up. All right, now this is the pretty side of the t-shirt. I'm gonna show both cameras this you you do not want to put your iron on top of this pretty side okay so make sure that you're flipping that down the pretty side is facing down it's, it's away from you right now and I'm going to run the iron over this t-shirt like I did the back side of the t-shirt I'm going to do that to the front side Again, you don't need perfection. You just need to, you gets, it gets any moisture out of the fabric. Um, it just makes it easier to iron on your, your interfacing. I still haven't decided which memory bear pattern I'm gonna use for this. So you get to watch me decide as this is a gift and um, any any bear that this person gets, I think they're gonna like it. So, 
or appreciate it. So I can see the um, indentation of the front. So I want to make sure my stabilizer covers that entire part. Again, you want the bumpy side down of your, sta your stabilizer. The bumpy side is the glue. So you want that on the fabric. Otherwise, you're not going to be real happy with what happens to your iron. Okay. Bumpy side down, smooth side up. And you'll just iron this. Again, you don't want to you don't want to push your iron back and forth. You just want to lift and press in small increments. Make sure you know what fabric you're using and the care directions. Most of the fabric that you, you know, the clothing that you get from your customers will have a care tag in it. You still want to follow those directions um, when you're creating a legacy project for them. I have four classes now that I teach and I still have my book that's still out if you're interested in any of that let me know because I do have a special code available if you want to bundle the classes with the book I do have that um, and then I have the free stuff on my YouTube channel and I am posting an updated video on there I just filmed it, but now I have to edit it edit, ugh, edit that Basically right now my YouTube channel is a hot mess and um, So I'm purging videos. I'm combining videos. I'm um, Editing some of the videos that are on there Just so I can get it um focused back on the original plan. So you can always find all my social media links on my website at stephaniegrams.com. I have a free newsletter. I've been working behind the scenes on getting that published on a regular basis now with good industry news and tips um, as far as becoming a mem memory bear business owner. All right, so that's pretty good. I'll check it in just a second. I'm gonna cut the excessive excess of my stabilizer off. And I put this aside because I can still use that. All right. That's all nice and stable, stabilized. I really wanna make sure that this, there's no air bubbles. That's what I'm doing right now. What I'm, I wanna make sure that I don't have any air pockets between the stabilizer and the fabric. Okay. All right, so I have the front here and I have the back. Now I'm gonna stop right there. You know, if you were making a t-shirt blanket or t-shirt quilt this is how you do that also this is one of those steps that you do for the the t-shirts and then you would just cut it out you know if you wanted to make a t-shirt quilt with just the this logo here but we're doing a bear today so let me decide which pattern I'm gonna do I have several I just don't know which ones I want do this one. I don't know. That one's ripped. Hmm. I don't know if I really want to do this one. 
that one's something different. Nah, I don't think I want to do this one. I'll fold that back up after I'm done taping. So the, just in case you're wondering, I am using the apparel interfacing. It is Pellon P44F fusible. I oh, will show Facebook first. Where is it? Right here. And now for YouTube. There, there you go. So that's the interfacing that I'm using for this t-shirt. And I use this in my t-shirt blankets as well. I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on the nine piece bear just because so and one of the things that I teach in my class that I'll go ahead and tell you now is whenever you have a pattern that you are going to use over and over and over again make sure that you make copies of it um, that way the original doesn't get you know completely messed up okay so we have a nine piece bear Here's the head center, the back of the body, the sole of the foot, back of the head, side head. All right. And I just have mine put in here. Um, there's an arm. Body back, head. I used to have these organized, but yeah, they're not organized right now. And that's just how it is, right? <laughs> when you move move stuff around, this is what happens. Okay. There's a leg and the sole, the head, pieces, and now I just need an ear. And I think I have all P one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What am I missing? Oh, front of the body front of the body would make a nice bear. Here we go, okay. There we have it. So I want this logo, I think, to go, do I want it on the front? Okay, so it's, so right here in, in a, an original nine piece, you would end up cutting this logo in half and nobody wants that to happen, right? I'm gonna turn my iron off, I'm done with that now. Um, so I have a little secret that I do in order to keep the front a one piece panel. And I will take care of that now. Excuse me as I dig for my little piece here. I'll probably sew this off camera. I'll videotape the sewing of it, but I'll put that part on my um, YouTube channel. I thought I would go ahead and do a little bit of a live for my private Facebook group because, oh, here's my labels. I've been looking for those. Because I'm trying to be um, less sporadic in my group and more meaningful in my group. Um, so, you know, that's, that's how that is. All right. So I'm going to cut around this. And you know what? I think I'm going to add, I wonder if this would make a good accent for that bear. Let me match something to this. I kind of have free range because this is a gift and it's not an actual order. So I'm going to see what I can match to this out of all the fabric that I have. Let's see what we have that might 
might go pretty well with this. And you know what, I need to turn this back on because I'm gonna need more fabric stabilized. Let's see here, oh, those colors are in there. It's not what I'm really looking for. Let me see. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. I think that'll work. So this is going to be the belly. I need to iron this little remnant here. I might use this in the ears and the paw. So let me iron this out. If you have a YouTube channel, please share it in our group. Um, and if you're watching this replay on YouTube and you have a YouTube channel, let me know. And I like to support fellow artists um, on YouTube. I know it is an uphill battle a lot of times with that. Okay, so I'm going to also stabilize this little piece of cotton fabric. Again, that's a preference for you and your customer. Always ask your customer, like, do you want a real squishy bear that you can just squish and when you squeeze it? Or do you want one that's a little bit stiffer, you know, like, that's not as squishy, <laughs> I guess you would say. I don't know a better word, as soft. A lot of my, my uh, customers like the extra soft squishy bear and they did not want stabilizing at all. Like no stabilizing. <laughs> um, so. And I might go look in my fabric stash for a little bit more um, options for the arms because I think I'm designing uh, I'm designing the bear in my mind as I speak to you now I think that I like having bears with at least three different fabrics and I like solid and print together instead of this like all print oops I better fix that um, in case you're just tuning in. So I just moved my sewing studio from my dining room to the finished basement. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I want to organize it because of everything that I offer now. I started out with just memory bears and the requests have grown to ornaments, pillowcase, like shirt, pillowcase shirts, shirts made out of, shirts made into pillowcases. Um, and then all of the classes that I offer. So really it has to do double duty. You should, I don't know a better way to, um, yeah, I like that. see me from the laptop sorry my nose is so cold my basement is freezing down here um, and these are just fabric scraps that I use for personal use I don't use this for customers um, I think this will be okay for like an arm, one in the arms I think should work with this. I love this tie dyed fabric, I didn't, I didn't have much of it and I've been holding on to it for a long time. And there's a lot of wrinkles in this one. Alright, so basically what I'm doing is I'm designing a memory bear as a gift. And I thought I might as well videotape 
some of the steps that I take to create a nine piece 18 inch memory bear. And um, again, you're gonna see the finished product and the sewing part of this on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching live through my Facebook group, right now I am just matching fabrics together and you can rewind the video later, the, you know, the Facebook Live later, and see um, how I cut the shirt, the, the different type of stabilizer that I actually use for this, and some of the tips that I shared. I love this fabric. I don't know if you can actually see it, but isn't that pretty? I just showed the laptop here. Okay, so obviously this is the pretty side. So you want the pretty side down. All right, and this is the doll. It's kind of real muted and dull. You want that facing up towards you. And then again, with your stabilizer, you have two sides. You have the smooth side and a bumpy side. The bumpy side is the glue side. So you want to put the glue side onto the ugly side of the fabric. And you want to iron that on. Do not push your iron back and forth because it rips the glue from the fabric. This part takes a little bit of patience, but once you have it stabilized, I mean, your bear is so much sturdier. And if you are making ornaments or even a t-shirt blanket I don't make quilts I make blankets and there is a big difference between the two my customers on the difference when they ask if I make quilts I say no I make blankets and I explain to them what the difference is so I'll tell you <laughs> the difference is this a quilt has those beautiful intricate designs in it, you know, people usually use a long arm quilting machine, which I don't own, um, or they have a really nice industrial machine like a Juki, which I also do not own. <laughs> those are those are extremely pricey. Um, but obviously, if you have that, you can offer some really nice services. Now, I have a standard brother machine. I have two brother sewing machines. They're Walmart brand, and um, I can make lap size blankets just fine with those. So the, another difference is a blanket is usually just the front and the back. I put a middle in, in my blankets. Quilts always have some type of middle fabric in it. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much the difference. You're gonna pay a higher premium for a quilt than you are a blanket. Blankets don't take nearly as long to make as a quilt. And quilts are usually like queen and king size. Um, so that's the difference. My blankets are what I call, I call them lap size. Um, I made one for one of my daughters and my other three daughters are waiting very patiently for me to get those done for them. I do have all of their shirts now. So now I can't blame my daughters for not giving me their shirts. So you will get to watch me make a lap size blanket here uh, pretty soon also, obviously not today. But I think this is good enough. I think I have enough variety for this memory bear. Um, if you have a customer that only wants one shirt used for the bear, then by all means, you won't have to go to all of this trouble to match fabric for anybody. Okay. I wanna make sure that the sides are secure. I've noticed some of this um, fabric, cotton fabric is stubborn. It doesn't really like to stick to the interfacing. You can smooth you know, run your iron across this now if you want to, because it's pretty much adhered. Now this fabric will always look like it has wrinkles because that's how they tie dyed it. Let me show you the difference. Once something is stabilized, you see how it doesn't drape as 
like flimsy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So always double check with a customer if they want their items stable, have to have stabilizer or not. All right, this is gonna be the front. Now, I'm gonna make the front of the bear and the back of the bear out of the main purple shirt. I want the head to be, I think I want the head and nose to be a little bit different like that. Okay, so for this nine piece original bear, there are nine, nine pieces, okay? It's an 18 inch bear. The bear head has a left and a right. So you have to cut two of these, all right? And then it has, that's the back of the head, sorry. And then it has the front, like the, the nose part, which goes in the middle. So I'm gonna have both sides of the head cut, I think like this. And this will be the nose. I only need this one. So I'm gonna pin this here. I am going to do all the cutting, all the sewing, all the finishing, all of that on my YouTube channel. All right. So if you're in my group, please, please, please come over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Ignore some of the old videos. They are horrible. <laughs> the editing is terrible, but I'm getting better. All right. And then for the ear, you're going to cut four ears it's because each ear has a front and a back and each bear gets two ears unless your customer does not want it to have two ears and yes you can have customers that do not want two ears two legs or two leg, two arms so please keep that in mind whenever they order um, I'm gonna move this over I don't like this uh, waste fabric so I'm going to put this nose right up along the side the best I can and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Let me get these all pinned on. So when you pin on the nose, try to keep it as close to an edge as you can. That'll save you a lot of fabric and you don't have to waste so much fabric. All right. And then the ear, again, we have to have four ears and two of these ear parts are going to be this particular fabric. And so I'm going to pin that like this on here. I like to fold my fabric, if that makes sense, and um, cut all my ear pieces at the same time, the same as my head the head pieces. Um, that way they're not lopsided and they, they match up real well, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to cut this little piece off of my ear here. So this is how I have the ear. All right. Actually, I didn't need to pin that quite yet. Let me match this up on this one. Again, everything doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, so don't get caught up in perfection here. Um, but you do you don't want to be wasteful either. So I'm excited as I have students graduate from my class. Um, if they want to make this a business, a service that they offer instead of a resource. Um, I list them on my online directory, Memory Bear Maker directory for free. It's just a little perk that I give my students. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna cut all four pieces out just like this. And I'll go ahead and cut this one out for you. So Facebook Live and then you and the laptop here, I'm gonna do my best to show both of you. You know, take your time, no rush. You're not in a hurry. This is not a race. You want good work. I'm gonna put my pins back. 
move my ears. Okay, so now I have my ears. Front and back one set. And the front and back of another of the second set. So see? Alright. This front and the back of those. And this is what I do. If I have several customers, I put the customer initials on this pattern piece and then I pin them back like this and I set it off to the side to where I'm going to do my sewing. And then I move on to the next one um, to design, design the next bear and so forth. All right, guys. So I am going to cut this off now. And again, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where a lot of my teaching has been going. All right. Again, you can find me at stephaniegrams.com, a free newsletter free tips, free resources, um, social media, share, all the good stuff. Bye guys. Thank you.